alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Praise be to Allah, the creator of his slave, Jesus. Today we will be responding to an intellectually bankrupt Trinitarian who intentionally tried to attack the Holy Prophet Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his beloved grandson Sayyidina Hussain alayhi salam by abusing a false report. Oftentimes, using this narration, the trigger happy critics of Islam yell all kinds of obscenities against the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And the narration causes consternation among some Muslims as well. Firstly, we would like to take a moment to demonstrate and laugh at the ignorance of this particular individual for clearly not knowing Arabic, as he called Majma' Majmu'. Although he wrote the name of the book in Arabic, in reality copy and pasted it from Google, he managed to mess up the book that he is quoting from. This basic error of not being able to pronounce the title of the book you're quoting from shows the intellect of this individual we are dealing with. We will be quoting the giants of the science of hadith, the highest authorities in the field of authentication and verification. Therefore, we won't take the time to give their biographies here, as we assume the audience to be familiar with many of them. Also, the references we will be citing will either be present on the screen in the form of a scan from a book, or they will be available in the form of a Shamila link in the video description. The report in question is from Imam al-Tabarani's Al-Mu'jam al-Kabir. In its chain, the underlined narrator is called Qabus bin Abi Dhubian. There is some different narrations in books on whether his name is pronounced with a fetha, kasra, or dhamma on the letter dha. So we will take a guess and call him Dhubian. We will present what the Imams of authentication have said about this particular narration and this particular narrator. Arguably the biggest Imam in the science of Hadith in recent times, namely Imam Shu'aib al-Arna'ut, weakens this narrator as he says he is da'if, weak. Talking about another Hadith which contains Qabus in it, he says, the chain is weak due to the weakness of Qabus bin Abi Dhubiyan. Shaykh al-Albani, who is another major authenticator in hadith in recent times, weakens Qabus ibn Abi Dhubiyan. He says, talking about another hadith, I say this chain is weak due to Qabus, as he is ibn Abi Dhubiyan. Albani then proceeds to quote major scholars preceding him who specialized in this field and weakens him. Imam al-Bayhaqi says about Qabus, he is not to be so evidence with, aka he is weak. Imam Ibn Sa'ad says, there is weakness in him and he is not to be so evidence with. Ibn Hibban says, he had bad memory. Imam Yahya bin Ma'in said, he is weak in hadith. Imam al Nasa'i said, he is not strong in hadith, he is weak. As for the Imam of hadith, Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, he quotes Imam al Nasa'i's statement when he came across the narration and the narrator. The great Imam Ad-Dara Qutni says that he is weak in Hadith, but not on the level of Matruq. The Imam of Ahl Sunnah, Ahmed bin Hanbal, said he did not reach that level of authentication, as he was not reliable. Imam Abu Hatim al-Razi said he is weak in Hadith and not to be so evidence with. Imam Jarir ibn Abdul Hamid said he was not from the trustworthy narrators. Ibn al-Tahir weakened this specific narration due to Qabus, he says. Qabus is not followed in this narration with his weakness. We have thoroughly presented how this narration and the narrator is weak, according to the foremost imams of hadith. It is important to note the hadith came to us through chains of narration, where one individual would narrate to the next. Early imams and scholars had a system of evaluation where they would identify narrators and their reliability and trustworthiness in narrating hadith. One of the conditions for a hadith to be used as binding evidence in law or as something we can be sure of the Prophet والسلام, saying or doing is that all of the narrators must be reliable. The report in question of this video fails this test, therefore their argument falls apart and ignorance is further exposed. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Yahya ibn Ma'in, ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, ibn Sa'ad, Abu Hatim al-Razi, al-Bayhaqi and the many scholars we quoted all stand as strong and conclusive evidence for this narration being weak and not binding. Possible objection they may say, 
But Al Haythami and ex scholar authenticated him. We respond What Al Haythami or other isolated scholars said due to their mistakes and errors in authenticating is of no weight in terms of evidence. As we have presented what the Mu'tamid, the relied upon top scholars and Imams of the Hadith verification, have said. Al Haythami's grading on its own is not binding or authoritative at all, nor another isolated scholars, in light of the thorough evidence we have provided. We want to use this opportunity as a reminder for the Muslims to not be fooled by such deceivers. A scholar authenticating a particular narration does not stand as a proof that it is authentic. Our methodology in this video was very specific. We did not straight away rely on an authority to weaken the narration in and of itself, but we demonstrated the truth in showing that one of the narrators was weak by nearly the majority of the Imams of authentication. If they cope by saying, we are not bound by Muslim hadith standards, we reply conclusively. You ignorant people make the claim using al Haythami's grading, so we will respond with the exact same methodology, the same that al Haythami would agree upon, if his mistake was pointed out to him. Nevertheless, no sane or critical historian would accept a report with a narrator in its transmission who is known for having a poor memory and being considered weak by the experts of verification. Let's hear an audio clip of the particular individual trying to abuse the weak report. It is no surprise he failed in pronouncing the book name properly and failed in quoting an authentic narration when his recitation of a basic Quranic verse sounds nothing more than horrendous and funny. <laughs> For this particular individual's audience who might be watching, even if this guy quotes you sources of any of his claims, we already know he is nothing short of a deceiver and cannot read and understand Arabic to save his own life. You guys will know more of what we mean by this in the future, inshallah. As for now, we hope you have enjoyed the video and learned about their deceptive tricks. <laughs> Oh